An aircraft P flying at 600 km per hour sets out to intercept a second aircraft Q, which is a distance away in a direction west, 30 degrees south, and flying due east at 600 km per hour. Find the direction in which P should fly in order to intercept Q. Let's look at the velocity of P. Now this is the absolute velocity of P, which means it's the velocity of the plane relative to the fixed ground. Now we have the magnitude of VP, but we don't have the direction. So we need to consider an angle. Now we could use the standard convention of measuring the angle anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. So that we would be getting this angle here. Okay, so the positive x-axis is this axis here, of course. So we're talking about an angle between um, 180 and 270. Well, roughly between those. We could also consider this angle here. This angle is an acute angle, so um, we have to ensure that the i component of this vector is negative. We have to stick a minus sign in front, and we have to ensure that j component is also negative if we work with this angle here. However, if we work with the standard angle measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis to the vector, we don't have to worry about minus signs. So let's do this. Um, let's call this angle alpha. So we know from trigonometry that since we're using this standard measure of angle, the x component of the vector is the magnitude of the vector 600 times the cos of alpha. So we don't have to worry about sines. The cos of alpha will come out to be negative in this situation if alpha is between 180 and 270. The y component is the magnitude 600 times the sine of alpha. Again, if alpha is between uh, 180 and 270, sine of alpha will come out to be negative. That's exactly what we want. So if you're unsure about the general direction of a vector, it's best to use the convention of measuring your angle anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis, and then you don't have to worry about sines here. Um, I think in this example, both the i and j components are going to come out to be negative. So in this case, you could actually just work with this acute angle here and stick in minus signs and you'll get away with it. But, you know, we can never be 100% sure of the direction of a vector. So it's probably best to stick to this convention, measuring your angle anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis and not worrying about the sign. Just multiply the magnitude of the vector by the cos of the angle to get the i component and the magnitude of the vector times the sine of the angle to get the j component. No minus signs appearing here. Since Q is flying east, the magnitude of VQ, well, sorry, vector VQ has no J component. So it's just 600i, it's just the magnitude 600 times unit vector plus i. Now what we need to do here is find alpha such that the two planes collide we will consider the relative velocity vector, VPQ, the velocity of P as seen from Q. So we imagine a moving axis centered at Q. If P is to intercept or collide with Q, then from the point of view of Q, the direction of P's velocity must be pointing towards Q must be pointing towards the origin of this coordinate system. So we need to find the angle alpha such that VPQ is a vector on a line that passes through the origin of this moving coordinate system. So from Q's point of view, P will appear to move in the direction of VPQ. And we're dealing with constant velocities here, so it's gonna keep moving in this direction, constant velocity VPQ, and eventually, of course, point P will reach point Q. So there appears to be angles alpha for which, well, maybe one or more angles, I don't know how many, for which this is possible. In certain situations, of course, this is not possible. It's not possible for the two objects to intercept each other. Um, I cover that in another video, actually, where if the objects don't intercept each other, we consider the distance of closest approach. That's actually a much more difficult problem. Um, if the objects can intercept each other, then it's a fairly 
straightforward problem. So here is vector VPQ. I've just taken vector VP and subtracted VQ. So I've taken the I component of VP, subtracted the I component of VQ to get this here. Then we take the J component of VP and subtract the J component of VQ, which is zero. So we just get 600 sine alpha. Now we want our vector VPQ to make an angle of 210 degrees measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. So that's just 180 plus 30 degrees. That's what we want. And it's a fact that the tan of the angle measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis to the vector is the j component of the vector divided by the i component of the vector. Now we could do this problem by working with 30 degrees, but then, you know, um, there could be an issue with where the vectors are. Okay, if we work with acute angles, that could lead to difficulties. But if we always follow the convention of measuring our angle anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis and using the fact that the tan of that angle is j component over i component, then we won't go wrong with signs. So this is what we want for vector vpq to point towards q and hence for the planes to intercept each other. We just need to solve this equation for alpha. We need to find the angle alpha um, that will do that. The angle alpha is the angle between the positive x-axis and vector vp. Now if you go to your calculator and get the tan of 210 degrees you'll get 0.577. Um, well, you know, it might be better to work with the sword form of this and the fact that we're dealing with 30 degrees should give a hint as to what the sword form is. Um, if you look up the tan of 30 degrees, you'll also get 0.577. Uh, but in tables, you'll see that this is given as 1 over root 3. Now, for angles in this quadrant, that is angles between 180 and 270 degrees, the tan function is positive. This is the T quadrant, okay? So the tan of 210 degrees is the same as the tan of 30 degrees. It's positive, it's plus one over root three. Now, something I could have done up here was cancel the 600s. Um, after you do that, you can cross multiply and you get root 3 sine alpha equals cos alpha minus 1. Now, to solve this equation, well, there's a couple of ways we could do it, but one way to do it is to square both sides. So if you square the left-hand side, you get 3 sine squared alpha. Now, if you square the right-hand side, you'll have an expression just involving cos alpha. Now, why do we do this? Well, we did this because we can replace, we can write sine squared alpha in terms of cos alpha. So we'll get an equation just involving cos alpha. Basically, we use this very famous identity here. So by squaring both sides, we can use this identity and rewrite our equation entirely in terms of cos alpha. So all the function, the functions will be the same. And the angle is the same also. It's alpha. So sine squared alpha is 1 minus cos squared alpha. Now we have cos alpha term and a cos squared alpha term. So it looks like we have a quadratic equation. Okay, it's not a linear equation. We have a square term. And uh, we have a linear term, cos to the 1 alpha. So the only way to solve this is to bring everything to one side and have 0 on the other side. Get our equation into the standard form of a quadratic equation. Now, instead of writing cos alpha here, we could just write um, x. So it makes it a little bit easier to read. x is equal to cos alpha. We solve this quadratic equation for x, and then um, once we found x, we can get alpha. If you factorize this quadratic equation, you get 2x plus 1 times x minus 1. Set each factor equal to 0, we get x equals minus a half. So x is cos alpha, remember. So we've got cos alpha equals minus a half, or cos of alpha equals 1. Now, when I got inverse cos minus 0.5 on this calculator, I get 120 degrees. Okay, now the cos function is 
negative in two quadrants. It's negative in the s quadrant and it's negative in the t quadrant. And that's what we want. We want the cos function to be negative. Now, if alpha is 120 degrees, since alpha is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis, then this is vector vp. But remember, q is down here with a velocity of 600i. It's moving 600 kilometers per hour to the east. So obviously, um, 120 degrees is not the correct solution to the problem. Uh, P is going to move this way and Q is going to move this way. This, they certainly won't intercept in that situation. Here's another solution to the equation cos of alpha equals minus a half. You can check this by getting the cos of 240 degrees. You can also get it from, you know, the cast rule. Um, this angle here is 120 degrees, so this one is 60 degrees. All you have to do actually is add 60 degrees onto 180 degrees and you will get an angle whose cos is also minus a half. Now that goes back to the coordinates of a point on a unit circle. Um, the x-coordinate of this point will be the same as the x-coordinate of, of this point here, you know, if we're dealing with points on a unit circle. We're not, but, um, it, you know, it doesn't matter actually about the radius. But anyway, um, that's that appears to be the correct solution in this case. Now what about the equation cos of alpha equals 1? Well, if you solve that in your calculator, you'll get 0 degrees. And another angle whose cos is 1 is 360 degrees. We can keep adding uh, 360 onto our angle. Actually, there is another one that I left out, 180 degrees. The cos of 180 degrees is also 0. Or sorry, 1, because if, you know, you consider the x value of a point on the unit circle, um, actually, I'm sorry, 180 doesn't come into this because 180 is actually minus 1. Okay, the x value of a point on the unit circle kind of tells you that the cos of naught is 1. Okay, so this, if our vector is pointing along the positive x axis, then on, if, if this is a point on the unit circle, well, it isn't, but it's the same idea. The x value is 1 if it's a vector of unit length, but so the angle between this line and the positive x-axis is 0 degrees and the x-value of the point is the cos of 0 degrees. Okay, um, so in that case our vector vp would be pointing in this direction and if that's the case it will never intercept q because q is flying in the easterly direction. They're actually flying parallel to each other. Now, the other option is actually, actually 360 degrees, but that's just, that means that VP is pointing in the same direction. We just go 360 degrees around. So alpha equals zero does not solve our problem. So there appears to be just one answer. Alpha equals 240 degrees. So here is our angle alpha, 240 degrees. So this angle in here must be 60 degrees. In terms of compass directions, we could say the direction of vector VP is west, 60 degrees south. We could also actually say that it is south, 30 degrees west. This angle in here is 30 degrees.